The winds of change are speeding up over the Vatican. The conclave vote will determine which way they blow. Electing a pope is a political as well as religious event. There are serious fault lines in the College of Cardinals. Some are traditionalists, many of them in the entrenched Vatican establishment. And some are reformers, mostly non-Italians who think the church's creaking bureaucracy and secretive ways are at the root of its problems. But as Marco Tessati, who's been covering the Vatican for 40 years, says, the cardinals also split into sometimes surprising camps. The reformist standard bearer is Italian Cardinal Angelo Scola, but... Scola. Scola is Italian, but certainly the Italians will not vote for him. <laughs> Scola's support actually comes from outside Italy. But it doesn't come from the U.S. Cardinals, who are thought to support New York candidate Timothy Dolan, at least to start. Then they may switch to Sean O'Malley of Boston. The traditionalist candidate is supported by the so-called diplomatic cardinals, the Italians based at the Vatican. But Odilo Scherer is actually from Brazil. The diplomacy cardinals will vote Scherer. I don't know how much successfully. They're lovely fantasies. <laughs> Father Thomas Rosica of the Vatican Spokesman's Office dismisses the media speculation, but everyone agrees the papacy is wide open and that a non-European pope, even one from the Americas, is possible. It's no longer the superpower can't possibly give us a pope. Mm -hmm. I think people are looking to the great countries of Canada, the United States, for example, is offering very significant leaders the traditionalists want to get the church back to its core values. The reformers effectively want to rebrand the church with an acceptable pope, an accessible pope, who can restructure and modernize it. That's the way, Scott, they think they can get people back to the pews. Mark Phillips in St. Peter's Square. Mark, thank you.